Welcome, everybody. I'm Lori Goldenhirsch. I'm the Assistant General Manager of Here Now Music Festival, and we are getting geared up for the 2024 festival from April 24 to 28 in Los Angeles at three different venues. We're about to talk to Dustin Seo, who is our production manager for this year's festival, and we've worked with him before. He did such an incredible job. And Dustin, I want to hear from you. <laughs> How are things going? Yeah, well, um, this year is crazy. Um, as Lori mentioned, we are uh, managing three different venues. Um, luckily, one of them is in partnership with UCLA and their um, Herb Alpert School of Music. So there is a little bit of lift off our internal staff team with that uh, with that event. But um, this year, we are um, presenting four of our concerts at two different venues in Los Angeles. One is uh, 2220 Arts and Archives in um, in the historic Filipino town, as well as Frankie, a uh, um, dynamic uh, warehouse uh, venue space in the arts district. And both venues uh, uh, you know, create different sort of challenges, but also um, open up a world of, of uh, possibilities for what we can do with artistic direction. Um, both venues in a lot of ways kind of are a bank blank slate. And that's really exciting in the sense that we can vision what we want to vision. And at the same time, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and that's it's yeah. so important for here now because what we do is very unique and every festival is different. And even within concerts, each piece is different, which means mm -hmm. flexibility is all important. Am I right? Absolutely. Um, just uh, I, as an artist myself and as a performing musician myself, I, I very much resonate with the mission and values of here now being a uh, um, you know, festival that celebrates and uplifts um, local artistry, local composers and local imagination. In that way, I think that um, the fact that Here Now partners with such uh, versatile and um, imaginative spaces does really help us unlock this potential for our core mission and values with our artistic vision. Absolutely. So 2220, 2220 Arts and Archives is where we did the entire festival last year. Mm -hmm. What's different this year? So this year, um, one of the biggest factors of why we decided to diversify some of our um, venue programming is because we are welcoming um, New York-based ensemble, International Contemporary Ensemble. They're an incredibly wonderful group of uh, excellent artists um, based mostly out of New York that has um, you know, renowned uh, recognition as one, one of the premier avant-garde new music um, um, performing ensembles. The, with their with welcoming ice, we also are um, expanding significantly the capacity of our stage. Um, you know, ice is a a, a large ensemble, and um, that's given us the ability to empower our local composers to write music for large ensemble and for many different Absolutely. instruments. Um, one of our the, the one of the pieces programmed this. Uh, that um, some of the pieces programmed this season are include, you know, over 15 plus size ensembles, including a full size grand piano, including uh, many percussion instruments like a four octave marimba, nipple gongs, uh, vibraphones. There's there's a lot going on. And um, as uh, incredibly wonderful as uh, 2220 is as a space, it, it is an intimate venue. And so yeah. um, as we welcome ICE, we have been exploring the appropriate venues that can both capture our vision and also uh, logistically hold the ensemble. And we were lucky to find uh, Frankie, this incredibly um, unique space in the arts district to, uh, to feature ICE at. But Frankie's interesting because it's run by some guys who've got a lot of ex events background. And so they know what different kinds of events look like, but mm -hmm. they really have built something where you have to build it from the ground up. Can you give us an idea of what you have to do in order to prep that space for a big ensemble like this? Absolutely. 300 so audience members. As implied by the description of Frankie, um, Frankie is uh, in, a, in a, a somewhat industrial warehouse space in the art, arts district that has been reimagined as a venue. Um, the space itself is a very open, uh, concrete kind of um, rugged and raw space um, that uh, you know has these wonderful um, you know windows uh, that surrounding the perimeter of the of the, of the ceiling and um, you know incredible natural light. The the space of it feels very urban and 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 uh, kind of um, uh, just eccentric and and so there it's 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 this very incredibly imaginative space but there's nothing there it really is right. just concrete and walls and yeah. so um, the beautiful thing about this is that because it's such a large open space the acoustics in there sound amazing there's um, you know the sound travels very far while also being incredibly clear 
And so acoustically, the, the space works perfectly, but um, to welcome a full ensemble, as well as uh, hopefully expected over 300 audience members, we need to build the space from the ground up. And so there's a lot of different aspects of this that we kind of often take for granted when we're in a pre-prepared space. The first thing is we have to build a stage. <laughs> um, it's, there, there is no performance stage or setup for an ensemble. And of course, um, if depending on the size of the ensemble or size of the audience, we can just um, play without a stage. You know, we could have uh, the musicians perform from the ground. But for this event, um, because of the dynamic of the ensemble, as well as the um, quantity of folks that we hope to be welcoming, we did have to create a proper stage. So I'm working very really about visibility, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, just to make sure everyone sees all the musicians, as well as the musicians have the proper, um, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, the proper fourth wall to um, present at their most excellent state. And so I have the privilege of working with, um, uh, you know, a vendor or a rental company that builds, um, you know, entertainment stages and um, our, our um, you know, our vendors and I have been working very closely to um, build, uh, you know, steel supported uh, stage the morning of the first rehearsal in the venue. Um, we're gonna have yeah. to do it in four hours. And, um, <laughs> you know, that's everything from, um, you know, like welding and building the actual framework of it to you know getting the right um, wood material on, on placed on it getting the right uh you know um curtain uh, skirts on a stage that you would never think about as details and and so um it's a very uh you know very there's a lot of prep into it and then it's just go time when we get into the space well and the timeline on this festival is is so essential they you know, having that timeline really mapped out because we've got people flying in mm -hmm. you have to you know build the stuff they have to rehearse while we're running other concerts exactly. <laughs> and then we have to be out what's the teardown going to be like on oh saturday uh, yeah i mean so so uh, you know we as it, as we are a visiting um, organization at frankie we of course have contracts with our timelines and so um you know, we have about after the end of the show and people are um, having a good time at reception, maybe grabbing a glass of wine. I will be running around in the background and <laughs> trying to get the stage broken down and 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 and, and, uh, and put back to, or, you know, and sent back before our contract ends. And it's about four hours we get um, in the space yeah. after uh, the show ends. And yeah. so along with the staging, we have to build a lighting rig. So, um, you know, I'm still actually in negotiations with the vendors about whether or not we're going to do perimeter pole lighting, where we set up poles with, um, you know, uh, stage lighting attached to them, or if we build a full truss, um, an actual, <laughs> you know, frame where we can have pinpoint lights, um, um, as, uh, um, you know, connected to it. And, and so, you know, depending on what our, we, we, you know, because this is our first time in the venue, there's a lot of um, kind of uh, educated, guesswork we have to do in terms of yeah. what's the lighting going to look like at this certain time how much lighting do the musicians need how much lighting do the audience members need um all of those things so there's lighting there's also sound um of course mm -hmm. um here now does celebrate mostly uh, for for the concerts that we're presenting in frankie it is mostly acoustic music but mm -hmm. um you know we also want to make sure that every single member of the audience gets a good um uh, vantage point um, orally with uh, to the music so we will be having live sound as well as recorded sound and so there's a lot of nuances with that beyond that you know we have to get chairs into the space for audience members we have to make sure that there's um, proper uh, you know mirrors and and furniture in the dressing room for the musicians we have to get a piano on the stage we have to get all the percussion instruments on the stage and then once everything's set, um, uh, uh, you know, as a concert attendee, um, we, we sometimes uh, take for granted a lot of the nuances that go into stage changes between pieces. Um, as the production manager, my job is to make sure that we are as efficient as possible in the stage changes so that, you know, folks aren't just waiting around for stands and chairs to be moved or for the piano to be positioned exactly. in a different way. All of that stuff is um, incredibly important to streamline so that the production aspects of the um, of the programming uplift the artistic aspects, not hinder the artistic aspects. I love the way you put that. It's it's interesting because as a performer, and you're a performer yourself, of course, mm -hmm. as a performer, 
unless we've been on the stage management side, unless we've been on the on the tech side, mm -hmm. most performers are not aware of just how much work and planning goes into every concert that they show up for and perform. It's not that they don't contribute because they're rehearsing and they're doing everything else, but it, it really is a partnership between the people creating the environment and creating the music. And exactly. if anybody ever had doubts of how hard it is to be a production manager, I think you just dispelled that nicely. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and, and to that point, Laurie, I, I do want to express um, my um, excitement and gratitude for being part of this artistic process. I think oftentimes um, um, a lot of the back end stuff, not just with production, but with social media, with um, oh, yeah. payroll, with all of these other administrative aspects, we often don't see how artistically important that work is. Um, yeah. Every single component of an organization like Here Now is an artistic effort because we're all working towards the same artistic product. Um, in the same way, you know, I, you know, to the audience members who are listening and 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 hoping hope, hoping to welcome to this space, um, you're part of the artistic product, right? Um, we're we're all in this, pro um, you know, this vision together of celebrating local artistry, local innovation, and um, it's my honor to be in a production role to, to uplift that. We are very glad to have you. Um, last question. Mm -hmm. I want to get this right. What is the craziest or most difficult thing that you've ever had to contend with? <laughs> As, uh, from a production manager standpoint? Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a good story. You don't have to name names. <laughs> I don't have to name names. Okay. Well, obviously this is going to be related to our here now concert. This, this is cool, so, um, hopefully, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't, it won't, it won't, I won't be telling title telling on too many people, but, um, you know, I think one of the interesting things about this year's Here Now Festival is that we have a lot of different contributors and stakeholders this year, um, um, you know, not just with our local musicians and our local, um, um, you know, uh, uh, vendors, um, we're working with like so many different vendors. We have, a, we have like our audio equipment rental company, we have yes. our staging company, we have our um, uh, furniture company, we have the actual engineer who's working on things. And then on top of all of that, this year we're welcoming uh, um, a, a resident ensemble, a, a guest ensemble to come and be part of this whole, uh, you know, a, like giant bowl of, of everyone's ideas. And so in some ways, my role as a production manager is to um, be the advocate for everyone's wishes and desires. And so um, one of the things that has been, I don't wanna say contentious, I wanna say, um, uh, um, one of the most collaborative aspects of this year was discovering what we need to do with the live sound in the room. Here right. now has historically always opted towards an acoustic sound for any event that does not actually in include electronics as an instrument. And, um, and as we are working with um, ICE, they are historically an ensemble that always uses um, live sound amplification as part of their aesthetic. It's not just a, uh, can you hear us or a thing of that nature. It's actually part of their um, artistic brand. And part so of the music. Um, yeah. um, this year, I think one of the most interesting collaborative elements I've gotten to um, uh, co-facilitate is finding the right balance between how much of the space is going to be acoustic and how much of the space will be amplified um, this is not just between here now and ICE, but it's including our uh, rent, our audio equipment rental company, as well as our audio, our, our a video and recording engineer. There's so many, you know, as we want to do live sound production, we also have to um, weigh that and balance it with the recorded sound production. So, you know, it's a lot of, hey, which mics can we share? How are we going to be able to split the sound? How are we going to make sure that the live sound doesn't affect the recorded sound? How are we going to make sure that we keep the live sound at a level that is still um, producing both the aesthetic of ICE and as well as the aesthetic of here now? And in this way, I think um, what could be potentially contentious and uh, and and a place of dissent, um, you know, I think my job is to transform that into possibility and new creativity. And um, that is a so big extra layer. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's been fun. It's it's actually it's actually been really fun, and it's uh, really exciting to see all of that come together. Because when everyone's artistic idea comes to life, that's an even incredible, more incredible product. Love that. Well, <laughs> thank you for everything you're doing. We look forward to the concerts, and we will see you soon. Okay. Well, I hope to see you thank all you. Um, at the end of this month. Here now is running from what is that Wednesday, uh, April twenty fourth, all the way to Sunday, April twenty eighth. Um, Absolutely. I might be getting my 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 uh, dates mixed up because I'm just 
thinking about you here now all the time. Fine. Okay. <laughs> oh, you did just fine. All the information's at here now, musicfestival.com. We'll see you soon. Fantastic. All right. Bye.